Hey guys, welcome back to 22LR, where we focus on the competitive side of the Rimfire world. We are back out here at the range today. The uh, Course of Fire for September got released by NRL 22 Management. Well, this looks like it's going to be an interesting Course of Fire. Let's get to shooting. Alright guys, let's get things started with Never Forget. We have a 1.5 at 50, a 2 at 70, a 2.5 at 80, and a 3 at 100. On the start signal, the shooter will take a position behind the ladder and engage the targets in the following manner with one round each. Hit or miss, move on. Any ladder rung that is not touching the tire, near to far. Different ladder rung, far to near. Different ladder rung again, near to far. Note, on this stage, elevation and windage shirts may not be touched. The only change allowed is parallax and magnification. All right, guys, as we get going here, I'd like to apologize. I did forget to start the target camera on this one. So unfortunately for this stage, we have no targets. But there's actually a lot to say about this stage. Um, I thought this was going to be a lot more challenging than it was, but that ladder is actually relatively stable, you know, prompt up with those three tires. Something that you have to use in this stage is holdovers. Understanding holdovers is part of your toolkit when it comes to precision shooting, and it does really speed things up in the long run once you understand how to do them effectively. So a little bit of advice, Always practice those holdovers, guys. When you go out to the range for a practice session, practice those holdovers. Get good at them because they really do come into play in a stage like this. Now, something that did get used a lot in this entire course of fire is this pump pillow. This pump pillow was kind of my best friend. It was like my blankie for this one. I used it for, I think, all of the stages except for the last stage. There's a way that I used it that was kind of an accident that ended up being super helpful, and I didn't even expect it to be. We'll talk about that some more here in a little bit. So I did practice the stage a couple of times, and the first time I did it, I did it starting prone, but both times I tried that, I couldn't make all the transitions and get all the shots off under time. So I decided to switch that up and try a different strategy where I was just gonna be scooting myself over from a seated position into a kneeling. That was the way that I was able to successfully get all shots off in time. Truth is, you miss every shot you don't take. Clean. For now, let's wrap this one up and get on to the next stage. All right, guys, next up is rebuilding brick by brick. We have a one to quarter inch KOL rack at 35 yards and a three inch at 100 yards. On the start signal, the shooter will engage the targets with one shot, hit or miss, move on in the following order. Double block, far target, single block, one inch. Double block, far target, single block, three quarter inch. Double block, far target, single block, half inch. Double block, far target, single block, quarter inch. Double block, far target, single block, quarter inch again. Yeah. Three, to be successful in this sort of stage, you really do need to be efficient in your movement. And that means getting your gear and your rifle and yourself resituated, getting your target acquired, because you have 10 transitions. So being efficient is really paramount to performing well in a stage like this one. Now, originally when I shot this stage, my thought was to go prone on the single brick and take a splayed out kneeling position on the double brick using the pump pillow as rear support for the rifle. But I quickly realized that that just was not going to work and was not going to make me efficient getting that rifle in position and getting my target acquired so I can actually finish this stage under time. So I abandoned the pump pillow to a degree, but I still left it attached to me when I tried this stage again. It did give me a little bit of a seat to sit on when I was transitioning back and forth between these two bricks. So I just left it tucked back around behind my back there. And every time I squatted down to take that lower position, my hips sort of fell into that pump pillow and it made it like a little bit of a chair. Not having my muscles hold my hips up really did make me more stable for this stage. And as you guys could see, it actually worked out pretty stinking well for me. I mean, it was totally unintentional, but it ended up working out. Something else worth noting during this stage is the importance of magnification, parallax, and natural sight alignment. Natural side alignment is going to make you fast when you're transitioning back and forth between these two sets of bricks. Now parallax and magnification, those two are gonna work hand in hand to make sure that that KYL rack is in perfect focus. To achieve this, take some of the magnification out of your optic. What this will do is open up your field of view so you can see a larger portion of the range and make that transition back and forth between the near and far target much more fluid. Now dial that parallax so that your 35 yard KYL target is crystal clear. All right, with one of the harder stages out of the way, let's move right on to the next one. 
Okay, next up, lest we forget the fallen. We have a one inch at 30 yards and a two and a half inch at 75. Okay. On the start signal, the shooter will ascend the rooftop and engage each target with two shots near, then two shots far, and repeat sequence until out of ammo or out of time. Note, the rooftop is sideways and facing the side with a peak to the right. All right, guys, getting rolling on this one. This stage seems like it is a bit of a gimme, unless you're a lefty. Now, if you're a lefty, I really hope your match director lets you spin this rooftop around so that you can shoot this in a way that works for you. But if not, I'm really sorry. This one's going to kind of stink for you. One of the most important aspects of this stage was proper gear selection in my mind. Now, for me, that included my Arca rail, my Harris bipod, and my Armageddon Gear Schmedium Heavy Fill. The Swiss Arca allows me to take that bipod and slide it all the way up near my magazine well and allows me to get my bipod and my bag on the rooftop to make my rifle nice and stable to shoot this stage. So you can really see the benefit of the Swiss Arca with Picatinny or Swivel Stud. You're really limited on where you can actually put the bipod and in a stage like this that could really hurt you. Let's get on to the next one. Next up is through the rubble. We have a three inch at 100 yards. On the start signal, the shooter will engage the target with two shots in the following prop order. Top of the sawhorse, 55 gallon barrel, seat of the chair, two gallon bucket, then five gallon bucket. Note, all props are scrunched together and positioned as pictured. Here's a restriction. No part of the equipment or rifle may touch the ground at any point during the stage. All right, guys, we're getting going on through the rubble. So on this stage, we have five different props, five different positions, and five different heights. It's important to be efficient in your movement again on this stage because efficiency is going to make it so that you're not breathing heavy by the end of the stage. So when I start, I start off nice and smooth, slap my bag up there, let the pump pillow fill the void between my armpit and my leg. Then I transition down here to the barrel. The nice thing about this barrel is it's sandwiched in between the chair and the sawhorse. So it makes it so that it doesn't roll too much on you, but I essentially take the same position. I use the pump pillow to fill the void, slap my bag up on the barrel, keep it nice and flat, now we transition over here to the chair. Now the chair, I decide I'm gonna sit cross-legged here and put that pump pillow in between my stomach, my chest, and my feet, and I lean in and just kind of rest on that pump pillow. It fills that void, it makes it so that my muscles aren't holding me up, and that helps make me stable. Um, once I break those two shots, it's time to move on to the two gallon bucket. Now, I thought about using this pump pillow as a bag for the rear of the rifle, but I remembered I can't let my gear touch the ground to support the rifle in this stage. So I have to fold up in this weird little shooting yoga position, break these two shots, then it's time to move on to the five gallon bucket. By this time, if you've not been efficient in your movement, you're gonna be huffing and puffing a little bit. Huffing and puffing in precision shooting is not good for you. Your heart rate creates movement in your reticle and your rifle. Your breathing creates movement in your reticle and your rifle. And trying to minimize that really is going to help you make those impacts count. That was a tough one, a lot of movement, but it was fun. Let's get on to the next one. Last up on this course of fire is 911. We have two one and a half inch targets, 10 yards apart, and a five inch at 85 yards. On the start signal, the shooter will take a supported prone position and engage the small target with one round, alternating left then right until nine rounds have been fired. The shooter will then take an unsupported seated position and engage the large target with one shot. The shooter will then perform a mandatory mag change and re-engage the large target from the unsupported seated position. All right, guys, wrapping up this September course of fire, we have 911, which is our bonus point stage. Now, don't feel like you should rush through this bonus point stage. These one and a half inch targets can prove to be challenging. So take your time, get your impacts. Something else to note while you're shooting this stage is you can only fire nine shots at those one and a half inch targets. So I feel it's really important to A, not only take your time, but B, to keep track of the amount of shots that you fired at those one and a half inch targets. Now, something I told myself going into this was that I should start and finish on the same one and a half inch target before transitioning up to that seated unsupported position to fire the last two shots. Now, something else to remember while you're shooting this stage, if you didn't have enough already, is that in between those last two seated unsupported positions, you need to do a mag change. It is a mandatory mag change, so even if you have a 12 round count mag, you still need to do a mag change 
while you're holding that rifle up in that seated unsupported position. Now I ended up dropping one of those, but that's okay. I had a lot of fun shooting this course of fire and I've got something special in store for you guys coming right up. For most of my previous videos, you guys have seen me shooting a Begara B14R, and while that rifle is exquisite in its own right, all the stars aligned and we were due for an upgrade. I'd like to introduce you guys to our Voodoo 360. This rifle is sitting in a Foundation Centurion stock with the Hawkins Precision M5 bottom metal, accompanied by a Trigger Tech Diamond 2 stage with a flat shoe. It's topped with the Hawkins Precision Heavy Tactical Rings and a Burris XTR Pro. Now for the foreign, we reached out to the guys over at 360 Precision and ordered their weighted Arca rail. We are really happy with how this rifle turned out. We hope you guys enjoy watching it as much as we love shooting it. As always guys, thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. And remember, sometimes it's easier to get forgiveness than it is permission. I hope to see you guys out on the range.